Hello, I am Stephanie Joy, the attorney at All Things Social Security and Joy Disability Law. Your video is about to start. I just wanted to remind you that if you click the join button below, you can learn more about the memberships offered at a very affordable price that can give you a little more direct attorney answers to your questions. Have a great day and enjoy the video. Hey all, happy uh, Independence Day weekend. Hope you all had a good Independence Day and now are having a very good weekend. It is really, really hot up here. Um, I think they say it feels like 110 outside or something like that. Of course, I'm inside, so not a biggie. Um, all right, the question arose, um, and this has to do with alleged onset dates versus established onset dates. Um, a person was confused as to why the onset date they alleged, you know, as being their work stoppage, because they could also prove that any subsequent work was arguably a failed work attempt, aka unsuccessful work attempt, or it never rose to SGA or a combination thereof. So that's all good and dandy. We propose those things and we try to get that oldest um, onset date possible. So the alleged onset date, uh, one would ideally assert would be the within reason, legal and otherwise, um, one could have. Obviously, if there was no treatment back when you allege an onset, it's probably not going to be the wisest of onsets. So usually it's a combination of, yeah, I was, I was starting to treat heavily for um, impairments that were, you know, limiting um, along with maybe the work stoppage. Okay. So when you get an award and you're wondering why those back benefits didn't go back to as far as you thought they should go. And you say, well, clearly my, you know, it was a failed work attempt. It was only three months in that interim. So that should have been overlooked, so to speak. Uh, I get that. But remember, the alleged onset date is not the established. So even though you may have had um, what would have been failed work attempts, had they found you disabled to begin with at your alleged onset date, then yes, it could go all the way back then. But if they never found that your medical evidence rose to the level sufficient to establish that it meets the criteria for legal disability at that time when that evidence was born, then that is not going to be the established onset date. They can't do an established onset date until they find that the evidence is robust enough to prove all those elements of disability. So that the, the severity, you know, first of all, the medically, medically determinable impairments, then that they are severe. How severe are they? What is, if it's not a listing level, is it an, R, you know, what is the RFC? At what point did the residual functional capacity of that person as per the evidence, and that could be ongoing diagnostics that start to show more. This is why we say diagnostics are so important. Eventually that diagnostic might show something that the other one didn't. Boom, now you've got um, an established onset date possibility at that date. Might not go as far back as what you wanted, but you know it is what it is. It's still a prevail, um, but I know it can be very disappointing to not get those back benefits. Um, they are so helpful to pay unpaid bills that went awry while you were not working or while you were working very, very little um, while being disabled. So important to note that you, what you allege is your onset date, that's your AOD, alleged onset date, is not the same thing necessarily and often not as your EOD. EOD, established onset date. That is what the SSA has established. That is also something that we sometimes appeal you know, because it would be a medical appeal to appeal the onset date. Um, there are pros and cons to appealing onset dates. Um, you might have seen some of the videos about the risks and rewards of appealing what would be otherwise a partially favorable that will bring you benefits going forward, but not as much as you want it going backwards. So video for another day. I think we have some loose ones on there. Um, but in any event, alleged onset date is different from the established onset date, and you cannot presume that just because you allege an onset date, you're going to get it, okay? Um, and those unsuccessful work attempts are fabulous. Um, the SSA is pretty good at siph siphoning them out if you alleged an onset date and then subsequently worked SGA. They are well able to. That's when they're going to bring in those 820s and 821s. They're going to ask you about that subsequent work, and they're going to be able to see whether it was SGA or not. And then if it is, was it a failed work attempt? And that will only happen if you were disabled before the failed work attempt. Not just alleged to be disabled before then, 
but were in fact under the legal criteria as they find it disabled at that time earlier on. Okay. All right. Just wanted to clear that up for whoever mentioned it. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, so if the subject matter of the video you just listened to is of interest and you want more on it, stay tuned. Here's another one about the same topic, but a little bit different by now. Good afternoon. Okay, so a lot has come up about the unsuccessful work attempt with the Social Security Disability Cases and SSI. And I just wanted to throw out there the definition and where you can find it, because um, we do a lot of talking about it. Um, we had a recent video concerning how you need to think about whether you have had an unsuccessful work attempt, also called a failed work attempt, um, that could help you have an earlier onset date for your disability claim, which would mean more back benefits in your pocket. It can also affect your primary insurance amount if you succeed in proving an unsuccessful work attempt and thereby getting an earlier onset date found to be true in your case. Um, that can increase your, your um, primary insurance amount, um, whether in a small way or in a bigger way. So it's really, really important to not fail to consider this because it might apply to your case. All right, so if you go to uh, DI space, I'm just going to be very obtuse about this, space 11010 dot one four five it's called unsuccessful work attempt uwa and this is an overview of it so i'm going to put this up in our glossary section but um, it will tell you that the definition of an unsuccessful work attempt it's an effort to do work in employment or self-employment so either one that discontinues or reduces to a level that is non-substantial gainful activity that's the SGA number we're always talking about. And there is a video on that that you're going to want to see if you're not familiar with it. So if you, if someone um, makes an effort to be employed or engage in self-employment and it discontinues or reduces below that threshold amount, so it's no longer substantial and gainful, but something less or zero, um, and that happens after a short period of time, um, because of the impairments or the disabilities that you're complaining of, or it can be if there is a removal of special conditions related to the impairment that were important and necessary for the, you know, for you to continue working. Um, the short period of time they're referring to that you were working over SGA uh, has to be no more than six months. And that seems to be a hard, fast number. Um, not something that they can have discretion to push around as far as I can tell. Um, so if you have that unsuccessful work attempt because it was SGA, but then it reduced below within less than six months, um, the work performed during that time period does not prevent a finding of disabled. In fact, if you have this, even while you have a pending um, disability claim, you could ultimately Usually if it ends and then you say, go to an ALJ hearing, um, you can argue that it was an unsuccessful work attempt and that your prior application date and alleged onset date still applies because you were disabled before then. And this was just a failed work attempt because the, S the SSA does encourage us to try to go back to work and be productive and not have to be on you know benefits. So if the... If that is the case, that entire work that you worked, and it could be where you're making huge monies, there's really no limit necessarily. You are trying, it's more of the time frame, and that there will be definite medical, strong medical proof that it, that those impairments that pre-existed and post-existed, um, that period of failed work attempt, uh, are the reasons why you couldn't continue any longer. Um the amount of money you earn during that period also is not something that's gonna be offset from your eventual award of back benefits. So you get to keep the money you earned and you also get to have the case continue and um, potentially and presumably prevail and you get both the disability payment months for those months and whatever you earned is still yours, okay? So it's such an important concept 
It applies when you're applying for, you know, to win your benefits. And it also applies later, although there are some considerations to take into account that I won't go into, into here. Um, but it can apply later when you're in your extended period of eligibility um, for certain reasons. Okay. All right. So UWA, unsuccessful work attempt, also known as, as the failed work attempt. Super important. We use it so frequently. It's like a regular consideration. I, I almost want to say it's it's helpful in 50% of the cases, um, you know, to to get to get more back benefits, to get an earlier onset date, which can affect your met when your Medicare kicks in, it can affect your primary insurance amount. And of course, it's going to affect the back benefits amount you're going to get. Okay. So keep that in, in mind and um check it out by now.